Tucked away behind a trucking company in Orange, New Jersey, you'll find this unassuming gym. And here you'll find 21-year-old Ian Green Jr. working to become a champion. Ian's been fighting for years, not just in the ring, but outside of it. Life has thrown him one obstacle after another, but he hasn't let those setbacks take his eyes off his goals. Ian hung out with his uncle a lot when he was younger, and when he was nine, he put on gloves for the first time. I would just, you know, go around and mess with things in the gym. So my uncle said, you know what, I'm gonna teach him how to box so he could, you know, stay focused into something instead of messing up the gym. One reason Ian hung around with his uncle so much was because his father, Ian Green Sr., was in prison on drug and robbery charges. It was kind of confusing because I see my friends with their fathers, and then I would just wonder, like, how, how life would be if I had my father growing up. Ian Sr. still served as a mentor to his son, however. When the younger Green would visit, his father passed along advice to ensure Ian didn't end up where he was. He basically was just telling me just to stay focused and just to always listen to my mom and never be a follower, always lead. He was basically saying, everyone is expecting you to be another statistic, just like me. Like, that's like father, like son, that's what they're expecting you, but we're gonna prove them wrong. As Ian was finishing high school, his father got out of prison. His mother had grown tired of the rough streets of Patterson and decided to move with Ian's sister to Georgia, leaving Ian to bond with his uncle and father and with boxing. But setbacks kept coming for Ian. His father and uncle learned that they were being deported to their native Jamaica. Him and my dad, were, they were like, they both were doing the wrong things when they were younger and they caught up to him at, at, the, at an older age. So basically, just one day, um, they knocked on his door and said, you gotta, you gotta go, you come with us. You know, I just wake up and I see about four guys in my room and my dad is explaining to me what's going on. Like, they're taking me back to Jamaica and I'll call you and I'll tell you what to do from there, so. The struggles didn't stop there. Not long after his deportation, Ian Sr. was diagnosed with cancer and he passed away this past February. It was a life-changing experience. It, till this day, like, it's just a different type of pain no one will understand. <laughs> Ian's father's passing left a huge void in his life. With his uncle deported and his mother living in Georgia, his support system had changed a lot in New Jersey. A lot of people would have quit in that situation, but Ian didn't. He wanted to keep chasing his dream. If I quit, then it's over. If I quit, well, I'm just another statistic. This is my best way out. And I stick with it because I, every day I see my mom, she's still working the nine to five, my sister. I want to get my family, not just me, I want my family to get out, get out the hood as well. So I stick to it because I got a lot of people depending on me. I'm like the last hope. The only statistics Ian's concerned with now are in the ring. Recently turned pro, and he's now 5-0. His potential and character caught the attention of promoter Joe Cran. I was referred to him by his trainer, Dwight Flemings. He approached me and mentioned that he had an excellent uh, athlete uh, who had a very good uh, amateur record and was just about to turn pro. Uh, Ian and I had a 15-minute conversation and I was sold on him. I uh, had seen him spar and after talking to him for 15 minutes, I understood that this guy potentially could be a middleweight world champion. He's tall, he's a great counter puncher, he has excellent feet work, and he has very uh, strong power. So he'll outbox you and he'll outpunch you. Ian still talks to his mother every day, but locally, his biggest supporters are his trainers. They treat me like they're like I'm their son. You know, the white and Muhammad. They treat me like I'm one of theirs. You know, they're there for me. Whenever I need them, whenever I need advice, I call them, they're there for me. While he has new father figures in his life, Ian still thinks of his dad every time he trains. Everything I do is for you, dad. Everything I do. Ha. Ha. Everything he does. That's not just boxing. Ian also takes time to do community service at a retirement home, and he's also taking classes at a community college to make sure he has a degree for when he's done fighting. He understands he's not just a boxer. Uh, he knows the importance of a degree, and as he matures to become a world champion, he also wants to become an entrepreneur. I'm doing that because when you work on one thing, the other thing tends to lack. In other words, like I'm working on my body all the time, but your brain tends to lack. So you gotta exercise both. So I wanna stay afloat mentally as well as physically. While Ian is setting himself up for success after boxing, Joe Cran and his partners are confident that Ian has a bright future in the ring. 
By the end of 2016, he'll be uh, fighting for significant fights. And then either at the end of 2016 or somewhere in the first quarter of uh, 2017, I think he'll get a shot at a world championship title. It, it would be everything. I, I think it's validation of, of his commitment and work effort. Ian, meanwhile, sets goals to make a bright future for himself and others. In boxing, just to become world champion. That's my major goal, just to become world champion. And, you know, to be up there in the rings with everyone else, with all the other greats. Outside of boxing is just to get my family up out of here, up out, out, up out the hood. Basically, that's it, and just to make my dad proud. In Orange, New Jersey, I'm Joe McCann.